Some of the most anticipated things that have come out in recent years have been pretty bad. Like take for example a game from a massive quadruple A company that has been developing a loyal fan base and is getting hyped up to be the next best thing. In where people be waiting an entire millennia just for a gameplay trailer and everyone is still excited to get their greasy hands on it. To then when it's released, pay 3 fourths of a placenta just to buy it for them to be disappointed, utterly distraught by the golem ah quality of the game. <coughs> the day before fest. <coughs> I'm not an avid gamer, mostly because I have a Macintosh that Steve Jobs himself gifted to me on his deathbed, so I really can't play most games. But if I was a gaming connoisseur, I would go through the 5 stages of grief if I spent every cent of my adopted son's college fund on some scatterbrained games like these. And it's not just with games, movies have also suffered from the same rushed and criminally ill prepared treatment. Like you're telling me, I have to bring my family of 5 on a night and we want to enjoy ourselves to go see whatever circus act snooze fest the sped class that Marvel has cooked up? Bruh, what do I look like, a dumbass? I'll just take them home, order some Subway, and watch a good movie like The Adventures of Tintin. By the way, that movie is amazing in all areas, so go watch it after this. And I know I'm dunking on Marvel specific- <laughs> Fuck, oh my god. And I know I'm dunking on Marvel specifically, but it's not just Marvel or even live action movies. Animation at one point was also tripping and landing face first on the floor. It has gotten better now and will continue to rise I believe with what we've seen already coming in 2024 and beyond. Get it? <laughs> beyond the spider <laughs> I bet y'all had a hoot and a holler with that one. Because of all that I have mentioned, I don't really expect much from these and other forms of entertainment. Like Zendaya once said, expect disappointment and you'll never be disappointed. But even with that mentality flowing through my neurons, there's still quite a few things me and every intergalactic breed have been eagerly twirling our thumbs for that are finally in the process of coming out after an incomprehensible amount of time. Stuff that has not a 100% chance, but a high chance of not being total unfiltered ass when it's released. When they eventually come out, the world will finally be at peace. Crops will grow, families will rejoice, and the Pistons might actually win a fucking game. Like damn, how is you what? 0 and 25 in the whole series? Do these dudes even train? My sister's basketball team could wipe the floor with them. Nah, you know what? Ignore the previous statement. I could jumble together my grandma's bingo buddies to play against this sorry I team. I, I don't know why I was so passionate about the NBA there, but when I heard about the Detroit Pistons being this down for so long I was just in disbelief. Anyways, I think that the award for most sought after and anticipated game of the past decade has to go to Monkey Quest Reborn. Nah, I'm just tugging your wang. Even though I do feel bad because Monkey Quest did get shut down, so shout out to all the Monkey Quest fans out there. I know y'all still in pain. So yeah, it's GTA 6. Everyone including Stevie Wonder saw it coming. Back in 2013 when I was just a premature uncircumcised little fetus, I had no notion, no idea of what Grand Theft Auto even was. The fifth installment in the series just came out and when I heard my friends at school talking about it I was so mystified that games with such violence, profanity, and nudity could even exist. I had an Xbox 360 at the time so I asked my mom about GTA and when the last letter came out of my mouth she acted like if I uttered the words dream and six year old in the same sentence telling me that I was forbidden to ever play that mind corrupting game. Fast forward a few years and me and a friend get together every week to play GTA at his house. I felt like such an outlaw. A disobedient prankish delinquent going against what my mom told me. After watching people play the game and after my own experiences with it, I came to my senses on why people love this game series and why everyone was raving about the 6th installment not coming out. Like y'all some dedicated ass fans to be playing GTA Online for a whole decade. The only two other games that I can think of that have had to wait so long for new content is Geometry Dash, which yes 2.2 is out right now so go play it after this. Shout out to bro for letting people know in the comments. And TF2 which if I'm not mistaken their fans have been waiting for an update to the heavy since 2008. Did video games even exist back then? Gang, Obama was about to be elected as the first black president in 2008. They have been waiting since the Obama administration. I have a close friend who has more hours on TF2 than I have hair on my balls and I have to shave twice a week. Bro more faithful than me man, I would have been gone playing other games after 2018. Okay back to the main topic. Now after a strenuous wait, the long anticipated 6th game in the GTA series is making its way to your local Nintendo eShop in what 2025? Bro, what I'ma be divorced with two kids by then? They gotta at least leave us with something. Oh wait, wait, there's a trailer. Okay, okay, let me see here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Alright, wait, something something seems fishy. Alright, let me pull out my magnifying glass. Okay. 
okay i have come to the incredible astute realization that there is no gameplay in this trailer i repeat this is not a gameplay trailer they got me looking up and down left to right side to side to try and find a speck of gameplay but alas i came out of that video empty-handed i'm sure that they will eventually come out with a gameplay trailer that looks staggering and that will even get the most egregious and relentless peace activist hype for the new game in the meantime we'll just have to play baldur's gate 3 because apparently that game is the second coming of christ also to be fair to rockstar games even if they didn't give us any gameplay they at least gave us a confirmed year that the game will release which is something that i can't say for mr Mr. Kanye West and Sir Jordan Terrell Carter. I'm not a dark edgy opium fan and I don't really listen to much of Ken Carson, Destroy Lonely or Homicide Gang so I wasn't anticipating Cardi's new project like other pillaging lunatic music fans but something that I can relate to is waiting an entire google for new music. Two years I waited for Pink Hearts. Two years! This is why I can understand going to increasingly more crazy lengths just to hear an ounce of Playboy Cardi babbling into the mic. Songs were getting leaked, tours and concerts were getting cancelled postponed and fans became gradually more unhinged so when mr terrell carter started the rollout for his album and finally released a song on instagram the crowd was going wild flipping tables kicking walls i saw two opium fans damn near launch a baby into the stratosphere like some sort of angry bird what? cardi started posting more on his story than a 15 year old girl when she gets her hands on instagram he released more snippets and a new song on youtube every vamp junior was getting fed bro also was interacting with his community one of the funniest music reaction streams young Dabo got his reaction reposted on Cardi's story. Dabo made it to the big leagues. Brother is basically opium at this point. It was just all around an amazing December for all opium fans. But on the other hand we got Mr. West who has been delaying vultures for the past month. Say what you want about Kanye's personality and ego. You could think he's good or bad but something in which everyone can agree on is that he makes some of the most heavenly dick glazing music of all time. Even if you're not a D1 Kanye Willie writer like myself, I bet you my whole Captain Under pants collection that you can still find enjoyment in some of Ye's songs like bro can't miss except on donda 2 but does that even count and if i see one of y'all say oh but drunken hot girls is me i'ma toss you to the taylor swift fans with all of this in mind imagine my delight when i heard that kanye about to release a new album on friday i was telling everyone i knew about how there'll be better days so when i got up early on friday i opened my phone checked spotify and saw nothing i checked youtube nothing i checked soundcloud nothing i booked a flight to Egypt and went to an ancient temple on some Peabody and Sherman type shit, looked at the wall art and found nothing. I have been lied to. The whole world has been swindled, outmaneuvered, led astray, run amok by this man. Crazy how some of us actually believed him. We gullible y'all. Gullible. I keep seeing post after post of him delaying his album on Apple Music. I have seen countless videos and articles about how Kanye and Ty Dollar Sign's album is gonna release on New Year's now. Like y'all really trust this man? Bro be spreading more misinformation than JK Rowling about her own book series. Okay, but if we look on the bright side, we are gonna get a bunch of new content in these up and coming years, so I'm happy with just the thought of new games, movies, shows, and music. I guess we just gotta see what the new year holds. With that being said, hope y'all have a great 2024, and as always, stay up. Oh yeah, wait, so in conclusion, oh, Kanye released a new song? Really? Alright, let's hear it. It's your bestie, Miss Miss Westie, don't try to test me. Oh, what the fuck? Subscribe.